So good, good. Nice to see you all, everyone, you know, again. Um, if you don't remember, my name is Rinka Gupta. I'm from Argonne National Lab. And what we are going to have now is a short 15 minute session where we are briefly going to revisit the topic of uh, agile methodologies again. We spoke about this topic today morning, but we did not go into too many details. And now is a good time to expand on it. Uh, in this session, we'll dis discuss what an epic is, how do we refine an epic. And after that, we will have a very short discussion on process uh, improvement in general. All right, so um, just some agenda slides out here. Let's jump to the... So what, what do we have, have out here? Uh, when anybody is adopting Agile, the concept, concept of EPIC is important and it serves uh, to manage your project, right? Uh, we saw in the morning today that EPICs are high level requirements. In addition to EPICs, the concept of uh, stories and tasks was also introduced in the morning. Now, in terms of hierarchy, EPICs are top level. Under EPICs, you can have many stories and under stories, you can have many tasks. EPICs, as I said, can have many stories and every story needs to be marked as done or complete when all the stories under an epic are marked as done, then the epic automatically completes. Stories have tasks and tasks are nothing but uh, steps that you can, um, you know, that you can outline to finish your stories. Now, some important things to remember out here is that uh, once you define your epic, you need to break down and re uh, refine the epics into story only when you need to. Uh, ideally, you want to refine them when you're getting close to the time when the actual work is going to be done. If you refine them uh, early on in the game, then there's a chance that you might have to change them all again because the requirements might change. So the strategy is to plan just enough so that um, you, are, you are able to move forward, but don't plan so much that you end up reworking stuff all the time. Uh, in terms of timeline, epics, of course, get uh, defined earlier and uh, the stories and the tasks come later. When, um, when we were talking about stories, one concept we didn't talk about much in the morning was a concept, uh, was a definition of done. When I say uh, a story needs to be marked done, what do we mean? Uh, defining the word done for a story essentially means when that story is going to be completed. The done criteria is also called as an acceptance criteria and the done definition should be understandable by all the stakeholders and should always be in a user language. User language is important because the customer uh, should be able to understand what uh, val value we are getting from that particular story. Also defining the done criteria for, um, uh, for, for a story helps everyone understand what the finer nuances of the high level epic, what the objectives are. It can also help align everybody's expectations better as to what is going to be the outcome of the story. Now, uh, so customers are definitely interested in stories. Uh, to execute the story, you need tasks and uh, the task may not be of interest to the customer or stakeholder because they are, they are sometimes very fine leveled, you know, uh, in great detail, but of course they are of interest to the developing team, right? So let's talk a bit about the definition of done. One simple way of the, uh, well, one definition of done is basically a story which is done, has met all the acceptance criteria for that story. There are several definitions of acceptance criteria on, on the slide that you can see. For example, one definition from Microsoft uh, Press states acceptance criteria as uh, conditions that a software uh, must satisfy to be accepted by the user or a stakeholder. Another de definition from Google uh, says acceptance criteria uh, is uh, our pre-established standards or requirements that a project or a product must meet. Acceptance criteria can be different types, right? It can be functional, like you when you say that my, pro my product should satisfy this functionality. It could be non-functional, where we say that my product should have this kind of software quality in terms of quality. This, these, are the, these are the kind of standards it should meet. Or it can be based on performance requirements that my code should ex execute you know, X person faster than today. 
And that is very important in uh, research environments. Having a definition of done before you are uh, before you actually start working on your story can be very, very useful. Let's say you have stories for your research projects and many times you don't know uh, where, your, where your research effort is going to go. You may not be able to predict what's going to happen, but it's good to have a story so that you have some idea of what the end result will look like. You know, and uh, the definition of done should be created or should be specified by people who are actually doing the work, but it should of course be acceptable by the customer and it should be understandable by the customer. So stick to a simple language. Uh, this done acceptance criteria can be renegotiated with the stakeholder if there's a need for it. Also like uh, when you are specifying your done criteria uh, or done definition, you don't have to be, uh, don't have to specify details that are orthogonal to the issues. For example, you know, you don't have to specify that this is how the, the GUI screen will look, here is where the buttons are going to be, and so on and so forth. So things that are um, uh, orthogonal should not make their way into uh, the, the done criteria for a user story. So now let's quickly visit the epic that we had outlined in our example, and it's based uh, example in the morning, and that's based on the heat equation. It's listed on the slide. And uh, this epic discusses the heat equation code and it covers two things. One is separating out utility functions and the second is separating out the integration function. And if you remember, we are outlined two stories for this epic, each focusing on you know, the utility, utility function and the second story focusing on the integration function. After writing, after saying that this epic will have these two stories, story one and story two, we start working on the definition of done. And then we also start working on the task list. And so the, this slide out here shows uh, the definition of done and the task list for each of these two stories. So take a look at story one, which is separating out utilities. My definition of done for this story is, uh, you know, all unit tests must pass, integration system tests must pass, code review uh, should be completed. Performance should be at least 95% of what it was before. You know, the utility should have been demonstrated outside of the heat equation application as well. What I've listed in the definition of done is my interpretation. And you should work with your team to figure out what your interpretation should be uh, for the story to be considered done. You know, we have uh, down out here, I have story two where I've listed the task uh, you know, the, the, the done definition for that as well. Uh, uh, you can read it, but basically it says the first task is adding testing for the integration function to ensure that it's actually working. Second is generalizing the interface for different appli uh, application, different implementations. And third is exposing the integration interface uh, for, for, other, for running tests and so on. You could totally add uh, more uh, tasks to just done criteria and make it as personal as you want. When you are breaking down epics into stories, there is no correct granularity. You need to do what is uh, useful for your team and you will figure this out on your, you know, over time, it may vary a bit. You may have stories that are very simple and they, you, you may think that, hey, I have a story that is simple. Do I need to make tasks for it? And no. You don't have to overcomplicate over your life and make tasks for stories that don't need them. Instead, you could just make a short list within the story itself and say that these are the list of tasks to execute, uh, list of things to do to mark the story complete. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when you're having a story and you have two tasks and these tasks are done by two different people, then it makes sense to explicitly create tasks so that every person can have ownership and can work independently. So one thing, one point I want to touch about is uh, agile estimation. <clears throat> Your ability to estimate how long it will take to complete epic and stories is going to depend on uh, the maturity level of your process, as well as how experienced you are in figuring out, uh, you know, getting the agile estimation. A significant point about agile estimation is that generally stories are not estimated in hours. They are estimated in story points. 
and story points are a relative estimate. So what is a story point? A story point is just a number that tells a team about the difficulty level of the story. How do you decide what point, what story point to give? Well, you sit with your team, discuss the detail, discuss the technical aspects, how long it will take to implement it. Basically, you know enough details about the first story to say, this is worth X story points. And then maybe if the second story is complicated, you say this is worth three X story points, or you know, the first story is worth one point, the second story is worth four points because it's four times more complicated and so on. There are many estimating techniques that you can use. And people sometimes are notoriously bad at estimating, but you can gauge whether one task is more larger or smaller than the other, and then start uh, you know, assigning story points uh, accordingly. Now try to keep things fairly simple. It's, uh, it's easier if you have a big epic, it might be difficult to estimate how much time that, how much, uh, you know, estimate the time for completion, but if you break it into smaller tasks, then it's quite possible uh, to, and a lot easier to estimate. And even if, and if you don't break things into tasks, then it's quite possible to underestimate how long it will take and that is a hard situation as well, right? So uh, let's talk a bit about process improvement. When we are talking about process improvement, we are essentially saying, hey, add more process to improve, you know, foo. Uh, realistically, whenever you add a process, there is going to be a cost, but uh, there's going to be some overhead associated with getting started. And one hopes that there will be a big payoff after the initial higher cost that you see in, you know, from start to progress, you see there is a, there is a certain cost for the new process, but eventually uh, you hope that the ongoing cost will be less and will benefit the team over time. Uh, we are hoping that you don't get overwhelmed by this piece of bit of overhead in the beginning and that you begin to experience the cost savings, you know, in longer terms. This slide out here quickly introduces uh, uh, you know, in, for, for incremental productive, productivity improvements, it, include, uh, it introduces a very nice concept of PSIP. Uh, uh, to implement improvements in your project, uh, we, uh, we recommend PSIP and PSIP stands for Productivity and Sustainability Improvement Planning. It's an extremely lightweight process for you to adopt better practices in your project in small incremental ways. Uh, you can get more information about the PSIP process on the bssw.io website. There is a link at the bottom of the slide as well. On this slide, we, uh, we have examples of uh, PSIP with uh, two, two projects. One of them is the NPITCH project and the other is uh, the EXALT project. And it relates to continuous integration and onboarding. For example, with NPITCH onboarding PSIP, you start with whatever your initial score is. In, which, in this case, there was no onboarding process for new team members, so the score was, um, was zero. And then there's a series of small steps that you can work your way through, and you track those steps to track that particular improvement. That's how PSIP works. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in improving processes on their team to check PSIP or to check the, the many other software improvement processes that exist out there. Uh, I think this is the last slide and I think I am doing perhaps good on time and they may, there may be time for some questions. David? Uh, 